Hey folks, Happy New Year and welcome back to the channel. I've got a fun one day build for you today. So the problem I'm trying to solve is that I love my wraparound sit stand desk, but my computer is tucked into a far corner and it's kind of annoying to reach down there to turn it on or off or reset it when I need to. What I'd really like is a discreet switch hidden underneath my desk so I can turn my computer on and off from a distance without having to reach all the way into my desk to push the button on the computer case itself. Then taking this problem a step further, I'd really like to be able to power my computer on and off from anywhere. For both of these problems, there are commercial solutions available. You can buy an on-off switch for your PC with a six-foot cable from Amazon. There's power on over LAN, which allows you to turn on your computer remotely using an Ethernet cable. But these have some drawbacks that I'm looking to solve. First, I want the power switch or the reset switch on my computer case itself to still work. Second, I want something that's more robust than power on over Ethernet. Anyone who spends enough time with computers, especially Windows computers, will tell you Sometimes you just need a hard reset. This might not be available using power on over ethernet, or it might not be set up correctly. You may have issues using a static IP with your internet service provider. There's a number of reasons why this could be problematic. So I'm gonna set out to solve these problems so that I can power on my computer from a switch underneath my desk. I'm gonna preserve the use of the on off and reset switches on my desktop computer case. And I'm gonna build an electronics box with a relay so I can use this typical household plug smart switch. I'm gonna use this smart switch to actuate a relay so that I can turn my computer on and off controlled by this. To be clear, I'm not gonna cut power to my computer. My computer will always have power. I'm just gonna use this smart plug to actuate the button. This should be a nice novice electronics project and I'll publish everything I do so that you can follow along if you'd like to. I'll spend some time explaining how I'm gonna do this project. Then I'll model an enclosure using SolidWorks. Then I'll get to making cables. Finally, I'll make a relay enclosure device and then I'll test everything and show you the whole process at a high level. If you have a desktop computer, there's gonna be a power switch and a reset switch somewhere on the case. That power switch is connected by a wire to the motherboard of the computer. What I'm gonna do is start by creating a splice cable. It will connect to the motherboard, and then it'll connect both to the original on-off switch on the computer case, and I'll create a new wire and a new external switch that I'll put underneath my desk. Using a similar idea, I'm also gonna create a small enclosure with a relay inside. The relay will be controlled by a smart plug. This will also be able to turn my computer on and off. I'll include a wiring diagram and a list of the components that I use for this as well. I'll use my normal smart home automation app to turn my computer on and off. At the moment, I happen to use Google Home. And like I said, I'll be able to do this from anywhere in the world. It will be super reliable. All I need is power and internet at my house and this will work. I won't need to mess around with power on over LAN. I won't need to guarantee that I have static IP addresses. The smart switch will handle all of this for me. So this should be a super robust, hard power on off and hard reset switch for my PC. I'm super excited about this project, but before I go any further, I'll set up a quick breadboard test to make sure all of my components work how I expect. I've got a breadboard set up here to test out my components and my wiring. What I've got is a nine volt battery powering these two LEDs. This bottom LED has a circuit broken by this momentary switch. The top LED has a circuit broken by this relay. To energize the relay, I've got to give it power through this smart plug. I'll do this through my phone. And there we go. The normally open relay has closed, allowing power to the LED. And the second LED still works. To be clear, power is going from the battery to the LEDs. These are not drawing power from the USB plug. That is just the control voltage to energize the relay. You see here, if I turn off the 9 volt battery, both LEDs turn off, despite the fact that there's still power energizing the relay. Excellent. My components and wiring scheme works. Next, I'll use SolidWorks to design an enclosure for all of these. I'll start that printing on my 3D printer while I build cables to connect all of this to my computer.
Okay, now we're gonna make our cables. Computer switches use these DuPont connectors, and these are really a pain in the butt to crimp and make yourself. So if you happen to have pre-made cables, and you can cut these and solder them together to make the cables you want, I definitely recommend that. I don't have enough of these, so I'll make my own cables. You can also turn female connectors into male ones by simply putting some extra pins in the connector. This works pretty reliably. I've really never had an issue when doing this. What you'll need for this is ribbon cable, tear off a piece that's the size you need, and you'll need a crimping set for DuPont connectors. I'll make this first cable and walk you through it, and then I'll do a time lapse for the rest of the cable assembly. I'm also certainly not an expert. I'm sure there are many YouTube videos that explain how to do this better. So check those out if you want to get better at crimping DuPont cable connectors. I always start by giving the connector a little bit of a bend. The reason I do this is because maybe I have kind of a crappy set of crimps. Often they'll just kind of sandwich the pin instead of bending it in the correct direction. Good. The purpose of all of that was to get the connector pins bent in kind of the correct orientation to start with. Okay, just twisting the stranded wire a little bit. Now we're going to put wire in connector. And that came out pretty well. I'm going to repeat this process until we have all of our pins crimped onto the wire. We've got our pins crimped onto the wire, and now we're gonna insert the pins into the connector housings. These are directional, they have typically a little arrow printed on them, and you just insert until you hear a satisfying click. Sometimes they require a little convincing, and I just use a pair of pliers for this. What you wanna make sure you do is push the connector all the way into the housing, hear that little satisfying click, and that way you make sure the cable isn't gonna get pulled out of the housing. We've finished two female-female cables. These I'm gonna use for the relay connector boxes. I'll show this later. Now it's off to making the splitter cables. Okay, we have two cables now. The female sides go into the computer motherboard. One of the male sides goes into the existing power on or reset switch. And the other male side will either go to an extended switch that goes under my desk, or it'll go to this relay box that I'll make so that I can power on or reset my computer from anywhere in the world. Now I'm gonna build the extension switch that'll run from my PC to underneath my standing desk. For this, I'll use a little momentary switch and six to eight feet of 22 gauge wire. I'm gonna solder this little switch on to one end of the wire and on the other end, I'll crimp on another DuPont connector.
That's it for this cable. We've got a momentary switch on one end and a DuPont connector on the other end. So I can connect this under my desk in a discrete location and I can connect this to a splitter cable in my desktop computer. There's one last thing I should mention in case you take this project on. The computer that I'm working on happens to have a power switch that's a little bit like this, where the power switch and the reset switch each have their own two-pin DuPont connectors. This makes it easy to work with the splice cables that I already made. That being said, a lot of computer cases or pre-made computers from manufacturers will have a single combined connector for the power switch, the reset switch, and LEDs on the front. This is an example from an HP PC that I happen to have lying around. If you were trying to add a splice cable to this, what I would do is just cut the cables to the power switch, being careful to identify which ones really are the power switch, and then splice in here by crimping on new connectors. Off camera, I went ahead and modified this cable to illustrate the point. All I did was cut the wires to the on-off switch and add in a little male and female DuPont connector. So with the custom cable I've built, the power button will still connect to the motherboard to power the computer on from the button on the case. And then I've got this extension cable, which I can use to plug in a switch on my desk or plug into the relay boxes that I'll build. While I've been building cables, my relay enclosure has been printing on my Prusa 3D printer. So let's pick that up and start assembly. Excellent. I'm really pleased with the fit. It's not perfect, but it's certainly good enough. After all, all this needs to do is protect the electronics and keep them in place. So now I'm going to solder the components on this little proto board and get to final assembly.
cool. I'm really pleased with how this came out. Now it's time to connect it to my computer and a smart plug along with this switch that'll wire in underneath my desk. Now it's time to connect the splice cable to my computer's motherboard. Off camera, I made a three-way version of the Y splice cable. This is so that I can connect my computer's original on-off switch, I can connect my desk switch, and I can connect a Wi-Fi enabled smart plug. The computer's on-off switch plugs into the motherboard in the bottom corner here. If you're trying this yourself, you can figure this out looking at your computer's manual, the motherboard manual, or tracing the wire yourself from your computer's on-off switch. You can see here, this is the power switch. I'll plug this into one of the branches of my splice cable. I'll plug the splice cable's female end back into the motherboard. And then I'll feed the two remaining male ends of this three-way splice cable to the exterior of my case. This way I can close everything back up and I've got the two cables accessible on the outside of the computer case. Pretty easy. Now let's add in the switches and test everything. Hopefully I've wired everything correctly. It's time to try and turn on my PC. Excellent. The normal on off switch on the front of the computer works just fine. Next, we're gonna try the extended switch to run underneath my desk and the relay switch that'll turn on and off using a smart plug. Next test is the desk switch. That works as well. Excellent. We'll see picture on the screen in a second. Perfect. Desk switch works. Now let's try the third one, which is the cloud controlled relay switch. To test the relay switch, I have Google Home open on my phone, and I've actually disconnected this from Wi-Fi. So this is connected through the normal cellular network, and it works great, excellent. I now have three ways to turn on my PC, the normal button, my easy access switch underneath my desk, and a remote relay connected to this cloud smart plug. One other thing I'll mention is that computer switches are supposed to be momentary switches. I could have wired up what's called a time delay or time control relay so that just by pressing a single button, it would actuate the button on and off for me. Instead, what I do for simplicity is I just tap the smart plug quickly, tap once for on, once for off, and then it actuates the relay on off and turns on the computer. If I were to leave the smart plug turned on, it would be as if I was just pressing and holding on the power switch, and I think the computer would stay off in this case. I put my computer back where it belongs in my sit-stand desk and routed the switch through this cable snake. Now all that's left is testing it. Tremendous. Everything works as expected, and I have a nice, easy access switch. That's all I've got for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking it. And if you want to see more videos like this about making, building, creating, consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks again, and have a very happy new year.